Hey guys, welcome back to another video where I am going to go over nuclear tech mod updates and changes. This time we are going to cover aluminum production, gun modification and also particle accelerators. A lot of questions regarding the particle accelerator from my past video. Also there are going to be a few minor changes which I will cover towards the very end. So there will be timestamps in the description if you want to skip to a specific section. So without any further ado my friends, let's get straight into this. Let's start this video with the aluminum production and bauxite processing. So aluminum ore has now become aluminum bearing ore and by smelting this in a furnace you will get cryo like chunks instead of aluminum powder or ingots that you used to get before. These cryo like chunks if you are in the early game you can smelt them in a crucible to obtain aluminum and sodium in the liquid form or in a combination oven you will get the aluminum powder along with lye. In an industrial mixer however you can mix this with sodium aluminate to obtain aluminum which is a far more efficient way. Now in a combination of one we are going to get lye as we saw before this lye can go in an industrial mixer where it can be used to process bauxite. So in the ash pit you can collect wood ash and this wood ash when combined with water will also give lye so that's an alternate recipe for it. And when bauxite will be combined with a lye in an industrial mixer it will give us the bauxite solution. Now bauxite solution can go in a fractioning tower where it will you get separated into red mud and sodium aluminate. Red mud can be used to make cement directly so you can store it in a tank use it later on. The sodium aluminate however it will go in another industrial mixer where you can combine this with the cryo like chunks and this will give us alumina. But do remember that this is an alternate recipe. So the first recipe for this is going to be by combining sodium aluminate with the uh, fluoride. The other one will be with cryo like chunks. Anyways, with the alternate recipe, we are going to process or produce alumina and this alumina can then go in an electrolyzer and the electrolyzer will convert it into a lot of aluminum along with chloride and this fluoride can once again be used with the sodium aluminate to produce more alumina. So that is how you can obtain like a lot of uh, aluminum and then combining this aluminum with uh, industrial grade copper it will give you gunmetal in a rotary furnace and gunmetal is what we need to move to our next section which is going to be the weapon modification table. So the weapon modification table can be crafted in the following formation like this and now there are two general updates the high durability parts and the receiver parts. So these are available in all of the different material variants and to craft them you are going to need the cast plates. So different materials will take different cast plates and the receivers in you will need more cast plates for them along with the gunmetal gear for them. So let's take the example of grease gun. Uh, right now it deals a base damage of 3 with soft point bullets and now if we want to upgrade this then you can put it in the weapon modification table you can see which upgrades you can put on it. So with the modernization update the base damage has been bumped up to 5 from 3. So that's our first special upgrade kind of because the general upgrades they can be put on every gun. The receiver upgrades and the high durability upgrades they can be put on every weapon. Now with the 45 conversion upgrade this gun will accept the .45 uh, bullets instead of the 9mm ones. You can also put the receiver upgrade for more damage and the high durability upgrade for basically more durability. So this is how you basically upgrade guns in this table. Let's take an example of the assault rifle which can be updated in crazy ways. So this is the base assault rifle right now. Now this can be equipped with a silencer, a scope, then you can also put a pin on it and uh, the hacksaw will remove its stock like this. And uh, yeah, as I said, putting on the receiver will increase the base damage of the gun and the durability one, the reinforced parts will increase the durability of this weapon. So yeah, you can see the damage change here. And with the 762 uh, conversion kit, now this one, instead of taking 556, it will take 762. And you can see the damage value for the explosive bullets here. By the way, 762 explosive bullets. Uh, this one, the 10 gauge explosive bullet and the 50 BMG explosive bullets. These are also new in the mod. So here you can see the area damage that this does. We have a menace on our hands. And with the 50 BMG conversion for the minigun and using the 50 BMG explosive bullets, you now have a cheap shredder which will shred your FPS. 
so yeah that's the minigun with the 50 bmg upgrade and the 50 bmg explosive bullets shotguns by the way they can have their barrel sort of and this will increase the amount of damage that these guns do so that's the old classic if you add the hexo here then this will basically turn it into a sort of variant of the shotgun and it will now have increased damage the normal shotguns can also have chokes on them in order to basically contain the spread and sometimes when you change the gun this will also completely change the name of it so now this gun has become the mare's leg from the lever action shotgun and using the incendiary bullets we can give the villagers a healthy dose of phosphorus using the speed loader upgrade will basically make your reloading up much much faster so the liberator here can take the speed loader upgrade and now instead of loading every bullet once you will load all of the bullet at the same time and uh, yeah that's the another upgrade and finally the revolvers they can take scopes now so you can use the revolvers to snipe mobs from far away Along with this, we also get some new legendary weapon and uh, a new B-side weapon. So not only can you basically make new weapons by modifying them, there's this uh, Lincoln Repeater, which is a new B-side weapon. Uh, and I'm using Jacket at Hollow Point rounds right now. So this is how it looks like, how it works. And now for the dual wield weapons, you can modify them one at a time. So in this, using this uh, arrow right here, you can change between the first and the second weapon. So for now, if I change the first weapon to have the 45 conversion upgrade along with the paint job, the Saturnite skin, then we have one UZ, which is using 9mm bullets, the other one, which is using 45 SEP. And you can modify both of them to be like same like this and be an absolute menace to this village right here. So that is how you can modify the dual wield weapons in this table as well. And yeah, that is all there was to the weapon modification. Now coming to particle accelerators. This is one of the max size or basically the max size that you are going to make it because this particle accelerator can make diagamma in it. Now this is an example here as you can of course use more RF cavities and more components in this one. So how this basically works for those of you who have not seen my previous video, which I recommend you do, is that the particle source will eject particles, they will end up in the detector and if the momentum, the speed is enough, then the reaction will happen, you will get the particle out of this. Dipole can be used to change the direction where the particles are going to go based on conditions. So the first condition is if it is lower than the specified speed, which is 400 here. The second option is if it is greater than and the third one is with the red snow signal. Now the RF cavities, they will impart momentum, but they will also give 100 points of defocus. In order to remove defocus, we need a quadrupole magnet because if a particle enters the detector with defocus, then it is going to crash. So let me show this entire thing with an example. Let's make antimatter, which requires a momentum value of 300. So three RF cavities for basically 100 points of momentum. This will, three of them will give us 300 points of momentum and I'm not using any quadrupole magnets. Now these things in order to work, they will need per fluoromethyl and power. Every component does except for the beam pole. So I'm going to add those. And now if I place the hydrogen and copper, it will say defocus error because the particles have 300 points of defocus and we have not removed it. To remove defocus, I'm going to place down three quadrupole magnets because each quadrupole magnet will remove 100 points of defocus. We have total 300, that's why I'm going to place down three. And now if I remove the coil from one of these uh, quadrupole magnets and then the particle will enter inside the detector, we will get a no coil error. So this is one of the change from my previous video. The particle source will now give us the error. What is missing? If the particle is not going with enough speed, you will get a no power error. But right now everything is satisfied. So hydrogen and copper will give us a momentum value of 300 and we will get antimatter. So you can make linear accelerators, by the way, which I did not cover. But let's take, for example, Higgs boson. It requires a momentum value of 6500, which means you will need 65 of the RF cavities, not feasible. That is why we make loops here. 
So loops can have two exits. So one of the exit is uh, specified using redstone, where the particle will go in the straight direction or east direction right here, and the other exit is on the right hand side. So let's take anti sherbidium for example. Anti sherbidium requires a momentum value of 400. That is why I'm going to flick this lever on. So the secondary loop will activate not the secondary loop the secondary side will activate here you can see and the particle will only accumulate a momentum value of 2000 and at 2000 it has a redstone signal so instead of going to the second loop it will just end up in this detector right here if i turn this off then the recipe will work of course it will but this time, instead of stopping at 2000, we are going to get a momentum value of 70,000 because this particle accelerator has been designed to make diagonal. So the particles will travel through every single coil. And then at the very end, we will get the anti sherbidium, but on the very final detector right here. So I hope you got an understanding of how you can branch these off uh, according to the things or the particles you need so the coils or the basically different type of coils they have a value for distance using a distance smaller than that between two of the coils will result in a power penalty and uh, yeah they also have a penalty or a limit on the amount of speed that the particles need to have before they enter the coil i covered all of this in my previous video so i recommend you watch that this one is just to give you an example of what a max size uh, particle accelerator would look like so for example to make higgs boson we need a value of 6400 which is less than the value of nbti so we can do this in the second detector and for digamma we need the entire loop and the digamma will end up in the final detector so that is how you can branch off, use multiple detectors to make the particles that you need using the particle accelerator. The refueling station, by the way, it works like the charging station does. It takes in fluids. And if you have anything that can consume that fluid, like for example, the jetpack here, then standing near it will automatically fill the jetpack up and then you can use it. I can see this being very, very useful in the space for where you can have the oxygen, liquid oxygen in these uh, refueling stations. So you can fill up your space suits. Also the toolbox now, it can swap entire hotbar. So by shift right clicking, you can swap your hotbar and yeah, very quickly. So pretty handy. Secrets can now be opened when they are in your inventory so you can open them in your hand like this and interact with them and basically that is all i wanted to cover in this video now i hope you guys found it helpful and you learned something from it if you did please do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below i'll see you guys next time till then peace out and stay safe